that we Jesuits believe that Ellen G. White is the only true prophet of any church today. Mercy. <laughs> okay, friends, I got a good one for you today. I have David Gates on the channel today. And the title of this one is Jesuits Believe Ellen White is a Prophet. I had heard of this before, but I haven't heard an actual testimony. By the way, I'm watching this video for the first time. I saw it. I'm like, yes, I heard of that before. And I've heard the testimonies of Jesuit priests who even have the Spirit of Prophecy Library in their home and they study in great details what seven day Adventists believe and you can also tell there are some things going on in our midst there are some people in our midst they're saying things pushing things there are new theology has taken place that you can almost tell that there's some serious devils going on here, you know? So anyway, I'm going to share a few things with you here after we listen to David Gates. He's, he's going to do his thing and then I'll share a thought at the end. Yeah, brace yourself. He's going to get really interesting. Oh boy. Let's take a listen. I was, I was in Idaho last year and it was a Mexican doctor that came to see me, a lady. And she said, I have a practice down in Mexico, and my partner was approached by a Catholic and said, the bishop is dying of cancer, but he knows you Adventists have a special health message. Would you be willing to treat him? The doctor said, if on the condition that I can give the bishop Bible studies. I want to explain to him where that health message came from. And, she, and he went back and came back and said, the bishop says yes. Okay, send the bishop to my office. So the bishop started coming. He put him on a special plan, prayed with him, and pretty soon the cancer started to disappear. And eventually it totally disappeared. And so now it's time for the doctor to knock on the house of the bishop. Hello, Brother Bishop, I am here to give you a Bible study. Can I come in? The bishop said, please do. You're welcome. They talked for a while and he said, okay, I'd like to, I'd like to discuss with you the spirit of prophecy and how it gave us the health message. Could I do that? The bishop said, yes, but before you do, could I show you something? Come, to, come with me to my library. So they went to the library. And on the library, all of the published writings of Ellen G. White. The doctor was stunned. Brother Bishop, how in the world do you have all these books? He said, and I've read every one of them too. You have. And what do you think about them? <laughs> he said, I'm a Jesuit. It is my job to read everything. And I want you to know that we Jesuits believe that Ellen G. White is the only true prophet of any church today. Mercy. <laughs> You gotta hear that again. Is the only true prophet of any church today. Back it up. I'm a Jesuit. It is my job to read everything. And I want you to know that we Jesuits believe that Ellen G. White is the only true prophet of any church today. Wow. And we believe everything she has written. And I will tell you another thing. That is why we don't want Seventh-day Adventists to believe anything that she writes. You can't be serious. Yes, to believe anything. Another thing. That is why we don't want Seventh-day Adventists to believe anything that she writes. Mm. Because if they do, they will know everything we're doing and everything we're planning to do. Wow. This was a stunning news to our doctor. You know everything that we do, and we don't even believe and act on what we the light we've received. Yeah, this is the exact same story that I had heard before. 
uh, regarding the Jesuits and the books that they own, having read our and believe what we believed and knowing who Ellen White is and her writings, how much influence um, it is cool had 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 on the church. And they know that she's a true prophet. But the this the enemy of the faith have also said, you guys shouldn't believe. I think a lot of the divisions and the confusion and some of the hatred against the spirit of prophecy is from them. So um, you hear the arguments, she's not a true prophet, she plagiarized, white lies, and all that. You hear it all. But they themselves actually believe her writings are true. So it's interesting. Uh, we were told in the spirit of prophecy, um, it's amazing, man. Satan is constantly pressing in the spurious to lead away from the truth. The very last deception of Satan will be to make of none effect the testimony of the spirit of God. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Satan will work ingeniously in different ways and through different agencies to unsettle the confidence of God's remnant people in the true testimony. Here is another one. There will be a hatred kindled against the testimonies, which is satanic. The working of Satan will be to unsettle the faith of the churches in them. For this reason, Satan cannot have so close a track to bring in his deception and bind up souls in his delusions if the warnings and reproofs and counsels of the Spirit of God are heeded. You know, I heard the excuses. You don't always have to, you don't have to deny that the Spirit of Prophecy is inspired to deny the gift of prophecy. All you have to do is just, don't read it. <laughs> don't read the testimonies. Don't share them with your church. Just keep the light covered that are written in the spirit of prophecy and the job is done. I think there's a lot of Seventh-day Adventists, uh, ministers, churches. They don't mention the spirit of prophecy at all. It's not even part of their sermons at all. It's almost like there is a natural standoffish spirit when it comes to the spirit of prophecy that works out Satan's purpose ultimately because the church is not reading and they're not hearing anything from the spirit of prophecy. And I've been in churches where I've sat down for months. You will not get a single quotation from Ellen White. I'm telling you. You will hear a whole lot of sermons, but not a single quotation from this. It's almost like they become a shame of the gift. It's like, what's going on here? And I think that's part of the deception as well. But I'll tell you another vision that Ellen White had, and this is a, a very powerful vision. Um, let's begin it from here, seemingly in the home. Uh, okay, there we, let's start right here. So this is coming from volume two, bio 207, paragraph one. While I was on their way to Battle Creek in the mid-March 1867, after an absence of three months, at the time, James White was eager to visit with the brethren, rejoice with them in the work which God was doing for him. As mentioned earlier, a dream of warning came to Ellen White. Seemingly, they were in their home in Battle Creek, looking out through the glass in the side door. She saw a company with stern faces. Marching up to the house two by two, she recognized them and was about to receive them when the scene changed. She recognized them. Interesting. Taking on the appearance of a profession, uh, I mean, proce procession circling the house. The leader carried a cross and three times declared, this house is prescribed. The goods must be confiscated. They have spoken against our holy order. Ellen White continued. He went on to say, Tara sees me and I ran through the house out of the north door and found myself in the midst of a company, some of whom 
I knew. But I dare not speak a word to them for fear of being betrayed. So this was an inside job. <laughs> I tried to seek a retired spot where I might weep and pray without meeting eager, inquisitive eyes. Whether I turn, I repeated frequently, if I could only understand this, if they will tell me what I have said or what I have done. I wept and prayed much as I saw our goods confiscated. I tried to read, uh, I tried to read sympathy and pity for me in the look of those around me, marked with countenance of several whom I thought would speak to me and comfort me if they did not fear that they would be observed by others. By others, I made one attempt to escape from the crowd. But seeing that I was watched, I concealed my intention. He went on to say, I commenced weeping aloud, saying, if they will only tell me what I have done or what I have said. This is a vision and a dream that needs to be studied. <laughs> you notice that some of the people she knew, they had crosses. There was a leader. The goal was to say one of the thing was the those books must be confisc confiscated. They spoken against our holy order. So that's like that's a lot being being said here. But it seems to me in that vision, whatever she saw, there was an attack on the books. These were the goods. I would have to sit down and break this down and study in depth, but I, I think there's a lot of theories about what this possibly means. And I would like to hear from you. But when I see this. I'm like, it smells like the Jesuits. <laughs> it certainly it has a description of the Jesuits within the church, tearing apart the goods, the testimonies of the spirit of prophecy. There is a system within that is discouraging readers, uh, the church members from reading the books. That's what it looks to me. I could be 100% wrong. But again, this is what I get. I, I would like to hear from you. What do you think this dream that Ellen White had actually means from your perspective? This is what I got. I'm like, this looks like Jesuit. It looks like women conflicts. It looks like there's an attack on the testimonies. It looks like people that she knew, like they had crosses, like they speak against our holy order. There's a lot of information here. Like, yeah, that looks like, uh, <laughs> that looks like infiltration to me. <laughs> that looks like Jesuit infiltration to me. Uh, if you don't think that's going on in the church today, I'm like, you must be living under a rock. <laughs> like, like, listen, man, you should go do your research on the Jesuit order and go 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 study what they believe and what they always had in mind. And, and infiltration is the key, bro. <laughs> and they always do it through the education system. They focus on the education. They go for the head because this is where you do the greatest damage. And if you don't know that, well, I don't know what to tell you. You should know that if you're a seven-day Venice. But I tell you what... Uh, <laughs> I think the, the solution to this is the wheat and the tares must grow together until the harvest. That's still the solution because, you know, the Bible says, Jesus says, you know, we, we, we you know, when the disciples came to Jesus in the parable in Matthew 13, he says, we have sown, um, we have sown wheat. Uh, you've sown wheat. I, where did the tares come from? Right. And the question was, an, an, an enemy have done this. So the servants of the household came and said unto him, Sir, this not thou so good seed in thy field. From whence then have it tares. Are you ready for the answer? Jesus said, an enemy has done this. <laughs> the servant said unto them, will thou go that we gather them up? And, you know, Jesus said, no, 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 no. Let them grow together until the harvest. In other words, friends, there, there's been some sowing of tares in seven day Adventist churches among the wheat, an enemy has sown tares among the wheat. This is why we have confusion. This is why we have stuff that are changing from the leadership. This is why we have a lot of things that we are wrestling about. Thank God he has some men in position who are pushing back against this. You and I should be fighting and praying and warring and talking about some of this stuff. Uh, be careful how deep you go because it's a lot more complicated than what you think. 
But I think not talking about it is just as dangerous also. So anyway, a lot more could be said. Share your thought and perspective with me. I want to hear from you. Link in the description below. Like and subscribe to the page. Click the bell icon for more. This was a great video. I'm going to link it in the description below. Check out our merch. Go to the store. At the end of this video, make sure you go over to Contending for the Faith. It is linked in the description as well as the title of this video. Click that blue title that says Pastor James uh, 365, something like that. Click that. It's going to take you to the other channel. Subscribe to that channel because a lot of the contents are going there as well. All right. We'll stay in touch. Until next time, have a good one. Bye.